Äh, hier ist das, äh, dies ist der zweite Teil der Sendung Macht und Menschenrechte am Donnerstag, den 13. November 2014. Ich werde das Interview jetzt in Englisch führen. Äh, zugeschaltet ist Herr Professor Dr. Mark Bliss. Um, hello, Professor Bliss. Uh, hello. Um, you have um, um, published uh, the article in Foreign Affairs to, uh, together with Mr. Eric Lonergan, um, print uh, less but transfer more. Yeah. And you have recommended uh, to transfer cash directly to consumers. Why is that preferable in uh, comparison to monetary easing? Monetary, monetary easing relies upon the distortion of assets in a trickle-down process whereby very large volumes of cash are used to swap assets which are then uh, have the effect of distorting prices of bonds and equities and houses and other assets. This creates a wealth effect which in principle stimulates further economic activity. It is biased towards inequality, it makes inequality worse and is very inefficient. If the purpose is ultimately to form bank deposits, just give people the money to form bank deposits, it's much cheaper. And um, how uh, shall those cash transfers be financed? If you have the financing to do quantitative easing, it's the same financing that you would use, only you would need a lot less finance. You can run this basically from the central bank's balance sheet as an asset swap, only you wouldn't do it for assets. You would simply credit the accounts to that value. It would be electronic money creation, only you wouldn't give the money to the banks as part of the monetary base, you would give it direct to consumers. And, um, well, I understand that um, the money is don donated to the consumers. Yes, but rather than donate it to them through the banking system, we simply donate it directly. And um, um, how... Um, how shall this uh, this money be um, be raised uh, by um, by privatization, or um, shall the shall the Federal Reserve lend uh, lend the money? But if it's if the Fed borrows that money, then it cannot donate it, um, cannot pay back uh, the money if it's uh, borrowed. Why can it not Why can it not pay back the money which it itself prints? There is a general misunderstanding here that central banks borrow money. They only borrow money to the extent that money is registered as a liability on its balance sheet. But since it prints the asset, by definition, that cannot be a liability in any normal sense. Central banks extend the monetary base upon which private banks lever credits. We are simply suggesting this is a very inefficient way of getting out of recessions it would be easier and cheaper to transfer the money trade base direct to consumers. There is no difference. No one asks the question, how can you pay back the money you give to banks? But we do it every day. Mm -hmm. And um, what you propose um, uh, um, money to give money to 80 percent uh, to the 80 percent poorest people of the country. Um, uh, it seems that it's a big one-time effect. Wouldn't it be better um, to pay for the subsistence, for example, of long-term jobless people? That, that's a, a decision for a democracy to make. And arguably, you could say that a basic citizen's income would be a better idea going forward, given large degrees of inequality. However, if it is politically toxic to give money in recessions to cure recessions, the notion of a citizen's basic income is even more politically toxic. So if we work with what is possible rather than what is desirable, this still comes out ahead. Uh, because a basic income would be uh, have, have to be decided by the American policy, and this seems uh, further away and, um, to give um, uh, let's say, a one-time big cash transfer uh, to the 80% um, of Americans, uh, this uh, would be, um, could rather be uh, put through via, via the Fed. Yes, but this would, this would be equally true in Germany. 
you have a higher baseline on your welfare state so long as you're not a single person due to the Hartz reforms, or at least a single male person. And you can imagine Germany having a form of basic income. You do not at this point. You have a minimum wage, and it's very recent. It's just come in. So can you imagine a world in which um, ger basically Germany can pass a law that gives everyone a basic citizen's income? This has nothing to do with the Americans. It's just that in democracies, people do not like the idea that some people work and some people don't. And therefore, it's very hard to get these ideas for a citizen's incomes um, out of the parliament. Um, you have um, published uh, a new book um, on the austerity measures in Europe. It is a German title, Wie Europa sich kaputt spart, die gescheiterte Idee der Austeritätspolitik. And um, what Uh, how can the EU get out of the spiral of ever new bank safeguarding, public debt and austerity at the cost of the population? They will have to. I just did the book launch in Germany and I returned from there yesterday. It seems to me that on the SPD side at least there is an openness to realizing that sich kaputt is an actuality and that the economy is shrinking. However, when you still have a very, very large banking system filled with very bad assets and the ECB is unable to fully internalize the costs of those assets, then Europe finds itself in a bad place. Its largest economy, Germany, is not big enough to swallow the problem. And at the same time, central bank is designed to fight a problem, inflation, which is unfortunate because what we face is deflation. So after five years of this, there seems to be a renewed appetite for discussing alternative solutions, usually around the area of public investment. Whether this, of course, comes to pass is another question. Hmm. And um, what kind uh, of public investment do you think about? Infrastructure, social um, uh, security? And in general, um, My take is less drastic. Europe is a very rich society on average. It just happens to be highly unequally distributed. And if we were able to pass a few things such as a financial transactions tax, if we were able to effectively tax tax havens, if we were able to shut down corporations cheating on taxes by trading through multiple venues, we would have a, far, a larger fiscal base. So the investment in infrastructure is important in some countries. But to me, the most important thing is simply to stop Sparpolitik, because it is zero sum against itself. All it does is shrink the underlying economy, and the same amount of debt gets bigger rather than smaller. If the point is to reduce the debt, the best performing class is Ireland, and Ireland has increased its debt 500 over the past five years. That's an achievement. Um. You are a professor of international uh, political economy. Which uh, role do human rights play in your uh, research regarding policy and uh, economy? Uh, forefront of my mind, but not at the forefront of my research. I am not a lawyer, and I do not think that rights are inscribed uniquely in uh, laws, nor do I think that laws are the best way to get rights. Social rights, such as citizenship, are something which has been increasingly commodified and privatized. And essentially, we are in a situation where now rich people in this world can choose the citizenship that they want to have. Something has gone very wrong if you can choose your citizenship based upon your wealth, because citizenship is about rights and duties and obligations, not just rights. So I believe that they all form a package, that we have rights, but we also have obligations towards each other, sometimes in the area of taxation. And we also have duties towards each other not to cheat. And until we get the other two right, I'm afraid that the focus on rights is not the only thing we should focus on. Um, if, we, um, uh, if our listeners... And, uh, want to uh, get to know more about your work, where uh, shall they look to? Well, if your listeners are primarily German, I would recommend the German translation of the austerity book, 
but the best starting place is the book, and that's uh, available from Oxford University Press in the English-speaking world and from Dietz Verlag in the German-speaking world. Okay. Many thanks for, for the interview. Wonderful. Very nice to talk to you. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.